So hello students, we'll continue again with unit number one and topic number seven, which is conventional slabs, modular construction methods for repetitive works, precast concrete construction methods, and conventional versus mechanized method of construction. So what do you understand by conventional slabs? The slab which is supported on beams and columns is called the conventional slab. In this kind, the thickness of the slab is small whereas the depth of the beam is large and load is transferred to beams and then to columns. It requires more form work when compared with the flat slab. In the conventional type of slab, there is no need for providing column caps. The thickness of conventional slab is 4 inches or 10 cm. 5 inches to 6 inches is recommended if the concrete will receive occasional heavy loads such as motor homes or garbage trucks. Conventional concrete slabs are square in shape and have a length of 4 meters. Reinforcement is provided in conventional slab and the bars which are set in horizontal are called main reinforcement bars and the bars which are set in vertical are called distribution bars. Based on the length and breadth of conventional slab, it is classified into two types. Number one, one-way slab. Number two, two-way slab. So what is one-way slab? One-way slab is supported by beams on the two opposite sides to carry the load along one direction. The ratio of longer span that is denoted as I to the shorter span denoted as small b is equal or greater than 2, considered as one-way slab. 
so in this type the slab will bend in one direction that is in the direction along the shorter span however minimum reinforcement known as distribution steel is provided along the longer span above the main reinforcement to distribute the load uniformly and to resist temperature and shrinkage stresses so the formula for one way slab is longer span divided by shorter span is always greater than or equal to 2 in general the length of the slab is 4 meter but in one way slab one side length is 4 meter and the other side length is more than 4 meter so it satisfies the above given equation main reinforcement is provided in shorter span and distribution reinforcement is provided in the longer span so main bars are cranked to resist the formation of stresses here example Generally, all the cantilever slabs are one-way slab. Chazas and verandas are a practical example of one-way slab. Next, two-way slab. What is a two-way slab? It is supported by beams on all the four sides and the loads are carried by the supports along with both directions. In two-way slab, the ratio of longer span, that is I, to shorter span that is B is less than 2. The slabs are likely to bend along both the directions to the four supporting edges and hence distribution reinforcement is provided in both the directions. Hence longer span divided by shorter span is equal to 1 by B which is less than 2. So in this kind of slab the length and breadth of the slab are more than 4 meters. To resist the formation of stresses, distribution bars are provided at both the ends in two-way slab. These types of slabs are used in constructing floors of multi-storied building. Modular construction methods for repetitive works. So, modular construction offers benefits such as high quality, low co cost and short durations owing to high productivity of repetitive production. To maximize productivity, modular construction involves repetitive schedules. However, the scheduling methods exhibit limitations when applied to on-site work. These methods are optimized by adjusting the production rate of activities. However, the bounds of the production rates of modular construction on-site work are limited because of workspace limitations in the units and varying amounts of work between the activities. This results in idling time in the scheduling methods. So modular construction method is excellent for projects involving repetitive construction work. That is, construction of multiple structures of similar type. Examples are identical apartment blocks, retail outlets, educational buildings, sector-specific office buildings, etc. Since Multiple modules of similar size, shape, and design can be built in the factory without many changes to the arrangements. It becomes even more convenient and economic. The next topic is precast concrete construction methods. A method of building a precast concrete construction includes lifting precast elements from a trailer load to the respective designated location via crane. It is convenient to establish precast yard and to erect the precast elements at near or the site which speeds up the process and prevents delays in large scale construction projects. Precast elements are being used for mass production to build a large number of buildings in a short duration. So this method is effective in terms of time, labor requirements, superior quality, better performance and finish, optimal material requirement, less wastage, desired shape, better finish, etc. So before selecting and finalizing the design of precast concrete structure, there are few points that needs to be considered like what are the possibilities, restrictions, transport issues and erection. Types of precast systems. There are four major types of precast systems which are classified based on load bearing structure. Number one is large panel systems. Large panel system refers to the multi story structures. In this type of structure, both large walls and floor concrete panels are connected in horizontal and vertical directions. These panels form a box like structure with the capacity to withstand gravity loads. 
there are mainly three arrangements of the large panel system. Number one, cross wall system. The main walls that resist gravity and later loads are placed in the short direction of the building. Number two, longitudinal wall system. The walls resisting gravity and lateral loads are placed in the longitudinal direction. Number three, two-way system. The walls are placed in both the direction. For apartments and hotel construction projects, this kind of system is used. Number two, frame system. In this type of structure, precast frames can be either linear elements or special beam column sub-assemblages. Linear elements are more preferred compared to beam column sub-assemblages because forming, handling, and erecting of special elements is difficult. The use of linear elements means placing the connecting faces at the beam column junction. Frame systems are being used for the construction of car parks, stadium and offices. Number three, slab column system with shear wall. In this system, the slab column structure sustains the lateral load effect but resists the gravity load. Below are the types in a sub-column system with a shear wall. Number one, lift slab system with walls. Here, the load-bearing structure consists of precast reinforced concrete columns and slabs which are assembled with spatial joints. Number two, pre-stress slab column. Two pre-stress columns are placed in orthogonal directions to achieve continuity. Number four, modular system. In this system, entire unit is cast in a factory and installed at the side, which is useful for smaller single units. This is suitable for toilet blocks and individual rooms, which guarantees waterproofing at junctions. Next topic is precast concrete construction procedure. So there are four processes involved in precast concrete construction. The first one is constructing a foundation for the building. Number two, erecting at least two vertical columns which can bear the load, load and reinforcing bars for the columns extending downwards. Number three, constructing a precast floor slab for the building in such a way that the floor slab is divided into modules and these modules would be supported on two column forms and also at least two column holes in each module and slab reinforcing. So different types of formwork based on structural member. Number one, beam formwork. So beam formwork consists of pre-assembled form sheeting parts as you can see in the picture here. It is a method for covering straps is used for nailing of sheeting boards together for providing sheeting base and side panels. So the extent of work is dependent upon the width and thickness of sheeting base and cover straps and the width of truss board. A whaler is mounted at the upper edge of side sheeting to hold together the forms by wire ties. The whaler and segments are propped by diagonal sheets. Number two, column formwork. The sheeting of column formwork is prefabricated depending upon the required column dimensions. Steel bowls are used to anchor the sheeting panels in foot rim. Vertical arc timbers are placed to take the forces from cover straps of formwork sheeting. The diagonal board braces are used to tie the column in formwork laterally. Three. Wall formwork. Wall shuttering consists of vertically arranged upright formwork bearers and sheeting boards are nailed to it at concrete side. Moreover, upright timbers are braced diagonally by using boards at both sides. The opposite whalers must be tied at specific distances and cleaning holes are to be located at the foot of the formwork. 4. Foundation formwork. Foundation formwork are designed differently for different foundation types and sizes. So formwork specifications will be different for isolated and strip foundation. The design of formwork is mainly dependent on size and depth of foundation. Metal screws and tie wires are used as formwork ties and generally sheeting panels are used along with formwork bearers for foundation formwork. Here is a picture of foundation formwork. Next, slab formwork. System of 
ceiling shuttering provides ease in transport, assembling, and stocking. So ceiling formwork has optimum stability and time is saved while assembling and disassembling. The basic elements of ceiling shuttering are wooden beam beams and steel supports and it doesn't require much expertise. The next topic is technical requirements of good formwork. One, formwork should be exactly designed of the required shape and size so that it fits at the designed position. Two, according to the desired concrete surface, the material of the formwork will be selected. Three, formwork should be strong enough to withstand the pressure of fresh concrete and working loads and should not distort or dis deflect from their position during the concrete placing operation. 4. Formwork should support the design horizontal and vertical loads. It should also support the other unusual loads also during the construction period. 5. The formwork should not disturb the structure or concrete surface during the removal time. And the last one, the segments of the formwork should be tightly fitted to minimize the gaps between them, which prevents the leakage of cement material. Here there is, I have shown a table of structure member with its ordinary Portland cement days and rapid hardening cement. So this structural member takes this much time of days depending on the cement if you use uh, for beam size walls and columns if you use OPC that is ordinary Portland cement it will take two to three days and for rapid hardening it will take two days for slab vertical support four days and three days for slab complete form of removal OPC ten days and rapid hardening cement five days beams where removal of sheeting props remains intact OPC 8 days and rapid hardening cement 5 days. Beams and arches, complete form of removal up to 6 meters span. OPC 14 days and rapid hardening cement 5 to 8 days. Beams and arches on complete form of removal up to more than 6 meters span. Uh, OPC is 21 days and rapid hardening cement is 8 to 10 days. Next topic, functional requirements of formwork. Number 1. Form segments should be of suitable size so that they can be transported and stored easily and reused at another place. Number two, formwork should be easy to dismantle and fit so that construction or building process advances. Number three, formwork segments should have symmetry so that they can be interchangeable and can be used at different places. Number four, forms should be simple to build. Number five, formwork should be lightweight but with enough strength required to withstand the loads and pressures. Number six, forms should be made such that workers can handle them without any safety issues, respecting the health, safety and hygiene regulation in effect. Next topic, basics of staging. So staging means that portion which supports centering and shuttering and this can be done by using wooden or bellies, wooden bellies, pipes, props or jacks, H frames and space frames using coupler or cup lock system. So now we'll go through to uh, videos. You can give your attendance in the chat box along with your name and enrollment ID. Thank you. MFA civil some rigid materials like timber or steel plates in which concrete is placed and in which it harden are called as the formwork. When the fresh concrete is placed for the construction purpose, it is in plastic state. Therefore, it is more essential to provide a temporary structures to support a fresh concrete till it obtain a required and sufficient strength. This temporary structures provide to a fresh concrete is called as the shuttering or formwork. 
Form work is generally made from an inexpensive timber plank. These are joined to form a required mold for the slab, beam, column and the foundation. Steel form work is used in the form of the plates which can be bolted together to form a mold of a different shapes and the size according to the dimension of the structure's member. Form work consists of a two main parts like mold or platform and supporting system or centering or shuttering. The mold or platform is built by joining the plank together by the nailing. The gaps between the planks are sealed so that the cement slurry should not leak through them. The supporting system or centering or